Hello, Ralph Edwards. We're here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio to say this is your life to one of baseball's biggest superstars. Stand by for the big surprise. This is your life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards, is brought to you by low phosphate whisk. Whisk beats ring around the collar. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry Coleman, and I'm the broadcaster for the San Diego Padres. I know that many of you may wonder what happens on a post-game show and post-game interviews. And we thought that we would take this time to show exactly how the managers and the ball players react after a ball game. Tonight, the Cincinnati Club won 6-3. They finally beat the Padres. As you see, we have the two opposing managers here, Sparky Anderson for Cincinnati and Don Zimmer for San Diego, and the two opposing catchers, Freddie Kendall for San Diego and your own Johnny Bench. So I think maybe we can start out with Sparky Anderson and ask him that pointed question, how come the Reds have so much trouble winning at home? Well, we always have trouble here uh, with this ball club, Jerry, all the time. Is there a reason for that, why a club gets hotter on the road than it does at home? No, I, I think it's just a question we play a lot better on the road than we do at home. I don't know why. I have no reason for it. Well, by golly, wait a minute. Don't go away. Look who just came in. Ralph Edwards. Uh, this is your life just showed up. Ralph, nice to have you. Good to see you, Jerry Coleman. And, uh, fellas, you mind if I watch here? You were Johnny's coach a few years ago, weren't you? 1967, I managed Buffalo in the International League. Johnny, at 19 years old, was the catcher on our club, and it didn't take a mental genius in baseball to know that he was going to be a superstar in the very near future, which he's been the last three years. Right, Don Sparky, you've been around him quite a bit. Well, first of all, Ralph, John's respected so much by all the players on the ball club, but me and John have a little different relationship that he brought to me one year in spring training. We're not managing a player, we're good friends. Thank you very much, Sparky Anderson, Jerry Coleman, Don Zimmer, and Fred Kendall. Now, Johnny Bench, we'd better move over to our This Is Your Life cameras because I just got the sign from your third base coach to charge ahead. Johnny Lee Bench, all-star catcher in the National League every year you have played beginning in 1968 as Rookie of the Year. 1970, you were voted most valuable player of the National League and Major League player of 1970. 1971, you win baseball's Golden Glove Award. In 1972, you received more votes for the All-Star Game than any other player in both leagues. It all began for you on December 7th, 1947, when you were born in Oklahoma City. When you're five years old, your family here, there's the family, uh, they moved to a small Oklahoma town called Binger. Now, exactly where in Oklahoma is Binger, John? It's about uh, two and a half miles beyond resumed speed. <laughs> <laughs> beyond resumed speed. Uh. No, it's a small town about 60 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. Uh, although a big sports writer once called a catcher's gear the tools of ignorance, you decide to become a catcher. That was not his decision, Ralph. Yes, I'm the one that suggested that he become a catcher. Yes, those voices are owned and operated by your mother and father, Katie and Ted Finch, and here they come now. <laughs> Just sit right over there, Miss Ben. Uh, Mr. Ben, why did you uh, want Johnny to be a catcher? Well, at that time, Ralph, there was, there was plenty of opportunities in the big leagues for catchers, and they were short of them, and we figured that was the best route for him to go. Johnny, do you remember when we lived at Aaron Springs, and I put, made you take a nap, and I noticed pretty soon you were missing? Did, you mean he didn't take his nap? No, he slipped off and he saw him school with the other boys. <laughs> That's a switch, Johnny. You, you played hooky for bed, so you go to school. <laughs> well, Katie and Ted Bench, thank you very much. Now, you take it easy. You're doing just fine, aren't you? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. 
Mm -hmm. In Little League Baseball, you advance to your school team in Binger, Oklahoma, <laughs> and can you continue to show improvement and talent as a baseball player? And he also turned out to be a very fine basketball player. Now there's your oldest brother, Ted, Teddy, you call him, <laughs> accompanied by the rest of your family, <laughs> your brother, William, sister, Marilyn, and your brother, uh, William there in Maryland. And look, your grandma and grandpa Cheney. And look at your grandma Pearl. Coming in the baseball buggy, here's grandma Pearl. You can help her out. Watch your head, grandma Pearl. Come on, sit down here. How about that for a family? Johnny, come on, sit in the middle. Put Grandma Pearl on the chair right there. That's it. <laughs> Teddy, you're uh, Johnny's oldest brother. Uh, what were you saying about basketball? Yeah, he was some kind of a basketball player. In fact, uh, when the scholarship came in, he had more basketball scholarships than did baseball. Yeah. William, stick your head over your brother's shoulder there. William Bench, uh, what have you got to say about your kid brother here? Well, when we was, in, uh, <laughs> when we was going to school, uh, when we was young in elementary school, we didn't have a lot of baseballs and bats to play with, so we more or less invented our own game. We got an old broken bat and a tin can, and we called it tin can. All right. And here is the bench baby. Now, you, you come around, put your head over there into the microphone. Marilyn, Kathleen, I understand that you and your older brother, uh, Johnny, always got along well together. Yes, except for one time. What, what one time? It was my birthday, and I was 12 years old, and Johnny came in and began to horse him around with my pretty birthday cake. And no better thing than to have to drop it and just in the whole cake. Isn't that awful? <laughs> those noises don't sound like chickens. They sound more like crickets. Do you recognize those crickets, Johnny? Bobby Gold. Oh, of course, it's your old buddy, popular singing star, gold record champ, Bobby Goldsboro. Come right in and share this middle mic here. Oh, Bobby, can we uh, have those cricket sounds again, Bobby? Sure. <laughs> if you'll notice, he made those cricket sounds without rubbing his hind feet together. It's very, very interesting. Now, can you make those cricket sounds, Johnny? No. <laughs> You're not even gonna try? I don't record. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've heard you're pretty good. Uh, Bobby, we all know what a busy schedule you have. We're most grateful that you found time to drop over to Cincinnati here to uh, surprise Johnny Bench. Well, thank you, Ralph. But that's what friends are for. But I tell you, I brought my guitar. I thought maybe we could get, get Johnny to sing just a couple yeah. of bars or something. Here goes your show. <laughs> you know that. Just join in. Okay. You just call out my name. And you know wherever I am, I'll come running. Well, let's hear what uh, Grandma Pearl Bench has to say about that. Pull that microphone in close to her, would you, Johnny? Uh, Grandma Pearl, did you know Johnny to be a mischievous troublemaker? Oh, he might have been a little like normal boys are once in a while. But uh, I knew when he grew up that he would uh, really be something because uh, he just had it in him. Yeah. And uh, he went to Sunday school for eight years and didn't miss a Sunday. Is that a fact? And, uh, Wonderful. I think that deserves a book. Wonderful. That's very good. That's another record that isn't in the record book. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just been a joy chatting with all of you. Johnny, it's a fantastic family, beginning with your mother and father, and you'll have more time to spend with Johnny later on at the party we're having for him at the Sheraton Gibson Hotel here in Cincinnati, where your family and friends have been staying, hiding, really, Johnny. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Graduate from uh, Binger High, Johnny. You're the number two draft choice of the Cincinnati Reds, and you start your professional baseball career in Tampa, Florida, as you said. It's there that you acquire the nickname of Hands. Now, uh, let you and I compare hands. Put your hand out there. Get a load of that. Look at that. Can you? You see that? They'll see it on television. Better you folks here. It's about two to my one. Let's see. Now, here's some baseball. 
How many? No. <laughs> how many of these baseballs can you uh, handle there? Well, if we got all night, about seven. Well, you we know, yeah, just just give us an idea. I know, I know you. He's, he he means what he says. The record shows that Johnny Bench has held seven baseballs in his hands. We weren't going to put him to it tonight, but how many you got there already? One, two, well, three, four, seven. five, six, seven baseballs in his hands. Oh, no. Oh, no. no wonder the nicknames are hands. It was Johnny Bench's hands that saved my life. Well, now, if you listen to that, you heard somebody say that Johnny Bench, hands, your hands, saved his life. You recognize that voice, Johnny? It has to be David Gunter. Your boyhood friend from Binger, Oklahoma, Dave Gunter. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, come over here and tell us how hands, hands, saved your life. Well, John, if you remember, we uh, just came back from uh, playing a baseball game at Riverside Indian School. Uh, there was about 12 of us on the bus. Uh, we were coming to an intersection, T intersection on the highway. The driver was slowing down you know, to make the uh, intersection. About that time, someone screamed in front of the bus that uh, didn't have any brakes. Uh, you were sitting right opposite from me. Uh, grabbed the hold of me, pulled me down into the floor. The bus rolled over three times, throwing out two boys and uh, killing them. When the uh, when the bus finally started rolling, landed on its wheels. You still had me around the waist. The back door was open. Your legs and my legs were both hanging out. This is uh, this way you saved my life. Thank you very much. Dave Gunter, now baseball and basketball coach. How you doing? Johnny, once you start playing professional ball, there's no stopping you. The Cincinnati Reds move you up to their other farm club, of course, until in 1967, you join them here in Cincinnati. And at age 19, you become the youngest first string catcher in the major league. <laughs> Well, Johnny Bench, age 24, winner of some of the most coveted awards in baseball. When did you uh, first begin to think about Major League Baseball as your ultimate goal? I can answer that question, Ralph. He was only 13 years old. Now the superintendent of schools in Navajo, Oklahoma, your former high school baseball coach in Binger, Oklahoma, Mr. Larry Spear. Hey, Larry. when Johnny was 13 years old? Ralph, the first time I saw Johnny, he'd just gotten out of the eighth grade. He was carrying this book on hitting by Ted Williams. He walked up and he said, I'm going to be a major, major league ball player. I understand uh, after Johnny graduated, you left your coaching job, Larry. Well, shortly after that, I did leave coaching, Ralph. I figured that once you've had a boy like Johnny Bench, you might as well quit because there's nobody else quite like him. <laughs> Superintendent of schools, Larry Spear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Johnny, like most catchers, every once in a while you, you, you get hit by a wild pitch or a lot of nasty foul tips. But Johnny is the first catcher I ever knew who was hit by a lot of pillows. Now, that's another voice from your past. Johnny, nightclub and recording star who was on the Christmas trip you made to Vietnam with Bob Hope and many beautiful girls, Miss Gloria Loring. He does that very well, don't you think? You know, what about this uh, Johnny's getting hit with uh, pillows? Who's bedroom was it? Oh, you know? now, come on. No, that was on the plane coming back from Long Bend. Oh, and uh, somebody started a little pillow fight, and Johnny got in there, and he threw them so hard and so <laughs> accurately. He was knocking people down all over the plane. But he couldn't catch any, because we got you with a few. Remember that? It was Christmas Eve, and uh, we were all lonesome and getting a little weepy, and he started singing a Christmas carol. And before we knew it, we'd been singing Christmas carols for about two hours, and we, we finished Christmas carols. Everyone we could think of, and we all jumped up and started to sing and dance the bunny hop, but Johnny didn't join us. He was too busy. He had two girls on his lap. Oh. <laughs> well, he was probably teaching them how to sit out again. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Gloria Loring, thank you very much for thank coming you. to Cincinnati to help salute our power. <laughs> it was a rough trip. 
<laughs> it looks like, like a rough duty, all right. Rough trip. Johnny, I'm beginning to think uh, that you're something of a ladies' man there. Well, if you think Johnny's a ladies' man, but I'm the guy who knows. He's the guy who knows. Now, there's a voice from your past that <laughs> speaks with authority. My roommate. My roommate on the Cincinnati Reds, now catcher for the San Diego Padres, Pat Corrales. <laughs> Are you trying to tell us that Johnny Bench really attracts so many girls? Like a big magnet, Ralph. You know, I was his roommate for two years on the road, and it was just fantastic, all those girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he must have had quite a line. Well, yeah, it kind of formed at the right, and it went around the no, block. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was never, never there, and I was always answering the phone. Uh, I couldn't take a nap, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, and uh, all the girls calling all the time. And so I was kind of the secretary and his <laughs> telephone operator. So uh, I forgive him if he'll stop uh, hitting home runs against the Padres. Uh, <laughs> no way, Pat Corrales, but thank you very much for joining us again tonight. I know you just played them earlier. Thank you. The second one. Aside from your skills on the field, Johnny, you have the one attribute which is so essential to a successful athlete, supreme confidence in yourself and your ability. You've never said truer words, Ralph, because Johnny proved that to me years ago. That's the voice of the man Colonel who Papilla, met you when you first entered the professional ranks of the minor leagues, <laughs> Army Colonel James Papil. <laughs> Colonel Papil, how did you find out that Johnny had so much confidence in himself? Well, uh, I first met Johnny at Newport News when Johnny was 17, uh, playing for the uh, Peninsula Grays in the Carolina League. And uh, one night, Johnny, after having a good night, came out and said uh, to me, uh, you know, uh, you remember Babe Ruth, don't you? And I said, I sure do. And he said, well, now you've met uh, Johnny Bench, and you remember that name for a long time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Colonel James Papier. <laughs> Johnny, uh, you've come a long way from Binger, Oklahoma, and they say you never forget your old hometown. And you can bet that Binger, Oklahoma will never forget Johnny Bench, Mr. Edwards. Well, it's possible that that voice belongs to a future Johnny Bench. This boy is the catcher of his little league team in Binger, Oklahoma, the Binger Preps, 14-year-old Tommy Jackson. Let's make him feel at home in a home. Hi, Tommy. Uh, I understand uh, you came all the way from Binger because you have something to say to your hometown hero here, Johnny Bench. Yes, real. Johnny, you never know how proud you are in Binger, Oklahoma. Is he an inspiration to all you fellas? Yes. Every one of us, when we go out to play a game, we're always wanting to think that we'll someday grow up to be like you. Oh, you brought something for Johnny Bench. Yes, we have two autograph balls by all the members of the Little League team. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Tommy Jackson. How does it feel to receive an autograph ball for a change, Johnny? <laughs> That's beautiful. Really uh, fine. You want to put Grandma there, please? You get her, Tommy. Johnny, uh, you get her, Johnny. Uh, now, we have this uh, gold charm bracelet uh, for your mother that uh, tells the story of your life from Marshall Jewelers of Fifth Avenue, New York City. You running away with the jewels in the jewel city? There you oh, are. Wow. These, uh, these are for your mother, and uh, we couldn't get them for all your girlfriends. I just, you know, I'm just saying too much there. And for you, Johnny, a videotape of this show. Now, uh, here, sit down here, Mother. Uh, Katie? Things about Johnny Bench that don't get into the record books. Honorary chairman of the Cincinnati Muscular Dystrophy Campaign, aid to sickle cell disease, tours for the servicemen in Europe, as well as Vietnam. And there's even a Johnny Bench Invitational Golf Tournament in Tampa for charitable purposes. Johnny Bench, whose dreams and desires continue to become realities, this is your life. Thank you, and keep slugging, Johnny. Your Life has been brought to you by Lever Brothers, makers of Dove, the beauty bar with one-quarter cleansing cream, 
Dove creams your skin as you walk.